There are many problems with the current model of plate tectonics. Some small and some major. A lot of these problems simply disappear when we examine a model where the Earth itself is expanding rather than the continents moving. Let's run through the top problems with the current plate tectonics model. Number one, the subduction of plates. There are many different versions of the expanding Earth model, and one of the main differences between them is whether they accept or reject the concept of subduction. It is clear, however, that they are both at odds with the concept of subduction put forward by plate tectonics. The main differences come down to how far down this subduction continues. Plate tectonics would have this going on for thousands of kilometres, which, as we have discussed in the episode What Drives the Plate Movements, cannot really occur. Recent high-resolution global mantle tomographic models provide images of subduction zones very different from the expected ones. The narrow high velocity zones under the Asiatic circumpacific arcs appear not to be prolonged towards the lower mantle, but instead deflect horizontally into or under the 400 to 700 km transition zone, and a horizontal flow must be admitted. In some cases, it even appears as if the leading edge has an upward motion. This presents a problem for the normal plate tectonics. As the plates reach a depth of 700 kilometers, its own decreasing buoyancy should pull the rest of the plate with it and plunge it towards the mantle. But here we are seeing something very different. The motion is not downwards, in some cases it is even upwards. Experiments conducted with different kinds of slabs show that stiff slabs tend to curl like wood shavings, and weak slabs tend to undergo retrograde subduction none of which fit with a standard tectonics model. High resolution images of the mantle plumes under the major hotspots show that the plumes can be followed up to at least 800 kilometers in a nearly vertical manner. With little to no deviation, this strongly suggests that there can be no convective circulation processes going on. Number two, distortions in the reconstruction of Pangaea. When we examine the reconstruction of Pangaea, there are certain artefacts that present plate tectonics with some major problems. Large tears are observed in the reconstruction of Pangaea that appear crossed by huge inlets like the Tethys Sea, the Arctic Sinus, and the Austral Sinus. Another problem is that the remainder of the Earth was covered in an ocean which covered more than one hemisphere. The age of this ocean is greater or equal to the Triassic. This means that a vast amount of oceanic lithosphere needs to be completely consumed during the post-Triassic times. Add into this that we should expect to find the remains of this pre-Triassic floor in each of the many tiers or sinuses, yet we do not. So in order to get around this problem, they need to devise even more complex models to explain how the oceanic floor in each of these sinuses was removed. Number three, the coincidence of ocean floor ages. Another problem relates to the maximum age of any of our ocean or sea floor beds. Their maximum age is the Jurassic, and this presents a major problem as the ocean floors do not move at the same rate. The Pacific one moves at five times the rate of the Atlantic. If the Pacific had moved at a rate just a little slower, it should have been sufficient to expose the Triassic floor bed. A rate just a little faster would have completely erased the Jurassic sea floor bed in the Pacific. Yet, we have the uncomfortable scenario that all the sea beds have the same maximum sea floor bed age. Number four, the triple point paradox. Understanding the concept of plate tectonics is normally explained as a simple process. One end is being subducted while new material is created at the other end. This movement occurs for each plate and causes the continents to move. The problem is that the plates are not aligned in simple slices. Instead, there are many plates that have three boundaries, meaning plates have to pivot. Plate tectonics prescribes that the motion between two plates is governed by a rotation around the common pole. The problem is that when we deal with three plate boundaries, each pair of plate boundaries 
requires its own pole, so three poles, which clearly creates a paradox, as you cannot rotate a plate around three different poles, meaning we cannot apply the rules of plate tectonics to these situations. Number five, the shape conformities in the Pacific. One of the arguments for plate tectonics was the conformity between the outline of Africa and South America, and we can easily see this in the reconstruction of Pangaea. The problem is that we can also find this shape conformity on the other side of South America with Australia and New Guinea, and this is not possible in the standard tectonics, as these continents were nowhere near each other when they were part of Pangaea, and are actually moving towards each other. The only way we can end up with conformity on both sides of South America is if the whole planet was smaller and these were all touching. Number six, paleontological paradoxes. Further problems persist with the idea of a Pangaea when we examine the flora and fauna. There is a strong similarity between the Ordovician nautiloids of Tasmania with the Asiatic and Laurentian ones. When we examine the Silurian, there is a strong correspondence in the similarities between the planktonic floras of the Canning Basin in Western Australia and those found in the USA. The Vonian vertebrate fossils of South America have been found displaying close similarities with the correspondent faunas of Antarctica, Australia and South China. These facts testify to the fact that these locations must have been much closer together which they cannot have been in a Pangaea reconstruction. Fossil bones of the Triassic reptile Lystrosaurus have been found in Gondwana in India, but also in many places in Eurasia, which should have been separated by the wide Tethys Sea. Many flora species typical of East Asia have been found on the opposite side of the Pacific, while the East Pacific barrier was at its maximum. The only way they could solve this problem was to have a series of smaller continental fragments which started a trip from East Asia near the equator at an unusually high velocity. Number seven, India's movement. The original position of India when it was part of Pangaea versus its later location. If India had indeed traveled up and towards Eurasia and turned in the process, we would expect there to be magnetic anomalies compared to its resting place. No linear magnetic anomalies have ever been found. In the next part, we will examine the main problems of dramatic changes in the climate and the wandering pole and see if an expanding Earth can bring a different perspective to this. On a final note, I would just like to say a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and those who support me through PayPal. If you are interested in joining the Patreon, then there's a link down below, or if you're interested in donating money, again, there's a link down below. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.